Switzerland is not a member of the EU. Now, please stop uh, start punching each other, because I know it's a touchy subject, and I promise I, I won't speak about it. So, where was I? Switzerland is not a member of the EU, but anyway, it's part of the European labor market. Swiss citizens can go to any EU state to work, and EU citizens can do likewise. So, no problem for that. But what about third country citizens, people from outside Europe? Today, I'm going to talk about them. Because I think that we need more brain power in Switzerland, and this brain power will come from outside Europe. Uh, maybe now you're thinking, uh, what am I doing here, up here on the stage? So, I briefly introduce you my think tank, which is called Foraus, Forum Außenpolitik, Forum de Politique Etrangère. It's a Swiss uh, national think tank, and we are focusing on Swiss foreign policy. Already 200 bright young minds are thinking of new ideas to tackle foreign policy challenges uh, of Switzerland. And our idea is to bring more knowledge in foreign policy, policy issues to, to Swiss politics. So, this talk is part of our idea to give new ideas for migration policy. And as migration policy is highly technical, I think I would start with a story for you. So, let me introduce you, Rajiv. Maybe some of you already know him. Rajiv was born and raised in India. He went to the best schools. He graduated from an American university and got his PhD from MIT in computer science. You're saying, wow, he's a good man, very talented. Yes, he is. So, as it often happens to talented people, one day a major IT search company, which has its headquarters near Zurich, um, calls him and offers him a contract. Rajiv feels honored, and he would like to work for that company. So, one day he calls Swiss immigration office to get everything fixed. A friendly guy picks up the phone and goes like, well, I understand that, every, that your company needs you. I understand that you would like to work in Switzerland. I understand that you would also benefit um, the Swiss economy. You would pay taxes and you would contribute to the Swiss social system, sure. But, you know, in Switzerland, we do have a system with quota. And now, you know, it's, it's already October and the quota are already exhausted for this year, but maybe you, you could try next year or after, I don't know. I'm, I'm sorry. Well, Rajiv is also sorry, and I am too, because I don't know if we can really do without people like him. Our economy would need these people from third countries. I think we can't afford this. And I show you why. Because the quota is very low. The quota is only 10,000 people a year. Let's compare it to the foreign population Switzerland has, it is, which is 1.6 million or 21%, which is one of, by far the highest in, in Europe. So these 10,000 people are literally nothing. And companies like Google or IBM have already been complaining about not being able to recruit the people they need. This is an alarming sign for the Swiss economy. Another point is that we need more innovation in Switzerland. And one can say that immigrants boost innovation. Let's have a look at the US in high-tech entrepreneurship, for example. 25% uh, of the leaders of the Silicon Valley firms are Indian or Chinese nowadays. And they generate more than 17 billion US dollars in sales and create more than 50,000 jobs. 
And we don't have to go that far. We can also see what happened in Switzerland. I mean, I would like to recall the achievements of Mr. Swatch, Nikola Hayek, who came from Lebanon to revolutionize uh, Swiss watch industry. Third argument why quota don't work is that it just doesn't make sense to, to protect our labor market by putting limits on, on highly skilled people. Because anyway, in any case, uh, an employer who wants to hire somebody from a third country, he has to prove that ha he has been searching in Switzerland and in Europe and that he couldn't find anybody with the needed qualifications. So we've seen that the system is not working and that we need more brains in Switzerland. We need the best and the brightest and I'm sure everyone in here is happy with that. But how can we do that? I have several propositions I would like to share with you for Switzerland to have a brain policy for the future. First one is quite obvious. We need a shift from quantitative to qualitative. Or let's say, in easy words, uh, abolish the quota. If we want to target immigration, this must be by targeting uh, quality. So we, we need a certain mix of qualifications. Maybe uh, we need a certain age, maybe we need a certain gender, or whatever you want, but not just a, a, an abstract limited number. Second point, Switzerland should enter the competition and be, be more active because if you look around, other countries, they have very sophisticated strategies to attract the highly skilled. O recent OECD reports show that uh, countries which are active are much more successful than others. So what uh, measures could we take? For instance, other countries have introduced fast-track procedures for, um, for immigration, for the immigration process that we could do as well, or introduce online tests to make it easier to immigrate. For, for these people, it would be easier to, to check online before if they have a chance or not. Another point is uh, mobility partnerships. I, I don't know if you've heard of this. It is a new instrument which is linking recruitment of, um, of foreign workers from developing countries with capacity building and development. This is a new instrument because it is favoring something that's called brain circulation. Maybe you've heard about it. Because these people, they come to Switzerland, they work in Switzerland, contribute to Swiss economy, and in the, in the same time, they are getting it an additional training. And when they get back to, to their country, um, their country will benefit from what they've learned. This is a win-win situation and we don't have brain drain like this. And we can also look to the U EU because there's a new directive which will maybe come one day uh, which would establish a single, a single work permit for third country citizens which is uh, a big thing also for Switzerland. I mean, if anybody can, who has a work permit in Spain can also work in Netherlands, maybe he should also be able to work in Switzerland. So one day uh, we'll have to get another, another bilateral treaty maybe. I'll get back to the EU questions of before. So fourth point. Uh, I've been talking a lot about getting people here, but it's not only about getting people here, because very often we already have them here. Think about young migrants who went to schools and universities in Switzerland. They have a high potential as they are well integrated, they speak the language, they know our working culture, and our economy would need them. And under the actual law, uh, most of them have to leave after their studies, which just doesn't make sense. We should start with these changes now. Because then maybe Rajiv's son, or if we are lucky, already his younger cousin, who is also a very, uh, very innovative guy, um, could come to Switzerland one day and have it easier to immigrate and work in Switzerland. And who knows? Maybe he will 
be part of the research group that finds a drug against AIDS, or I don't know, uh, find a sustainable, sustainable energy provider, or at least uh, lead our miserable football team to the World Cup. <laughs> we would be very happy about that as well. And we have to take these uh, challenges now. So Swiss history shows uh, how important brains are. They are our main resource. Political will for the necessary changes is not there yet, so that's why I ask you now to spread the word how desperately we need the best brains. Because in Switzerland, we have direct democracy, so your grandmother needs to know, and Willy, and Hans, and Margrit from Schlieren, and from Oberbregisee, all of them, they have to know. And then uh, we put pressure on, on politicians, and one day, maybe politics will follow common sense. Thank you.